we're going to compare the C200 with the EVA1. Eva. <laughs> oh, hey. Hi, this is J.P. Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. And we've got Maricelli de Monte Cristo here. What an Yay. awesome name. <laughs> Good name. Wasn't there a movie made after you? Uh, I the think Count of Monte Cristo? Anyway. That was before. Oh, before oh. you. Okay, <laughs> yes, long before you. All right. Anyway, today we're going to take a look at the C200 and we're going to compare it heads up with... The Panasonic EVA1. And we're actually here on the original set that Stanley Kubrick used to fake the moon landings. It's a little overgrown these days, but we're excited to be here. Uh, it took a lot of red tape cutting. Yep, it's not easy yeah. to find, but you know, if you know the right people at NASA. So let's take a look at what we're going to look at today. What's the first thing on your mind, Kenneth? Uh, obviously picture quality, just general color. How do the colors uh, render? How's the dynamic range? How's the noise? ISO, kind of you want to see what the ISO looks yeah, like? Yeah, we definitely want to do an ISO test, especially because this camera has dual native ISOs, 800 and 2500. So hypothetically, that should make it a little better in low light, but we'll see. It'd be interesting to look at that. We also want to look at slow motion on both of them because they mm -hmm. both do 120 frames a second at 1080p, which yep. is nice. Not cropped, which is great. And yep. this, this one can do 240 frames per second. I don't know if we'll test that, but it does do it. Does it do 240 it frames? It does do 240. Oh, that's impressive. It's got a crop though. Yeah, goes to 11. All right. So let's get started and see what we can do. So here we are magically back in the uh, Slender Lens studio looking at the graded footage. Graded footage. Just graded itself, didn't it? It does. You just put it into the grading machine. It's like a fax. It's amazing. You send it from one computer to the other and it comes out looking great. And in the middle is Kenneth going. <laughs> <laughs> Takes about four hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if there are any little errors or if the contrast isn't quite right, I apologize. Fast turnaround. Yep. Anyways, so let's talk about the uh, usability. Okay. Of these cameras. Just the ergonomics I, of holding them. Yeah, I feel like after looking at the footage, I feel like one of the biggest elements of what makes you choose one or the other will actually be usability or ergonomics. Because you feel like they're really close. I feel like they're very close in terms Interesting. of Interesting. Um, well, there's a couple other factors in there as well, but we'll get to those. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so what do you like about the Canon's ergonomics? Well, I just, I feel like on this Canon C200, the buttons are easy to get to, the ND is easy to use, the aperture is easy to use right up on the hand. I just, everything about it I think is really just very, it's in the right place for me. And I kind of felt the same way the first time I used a C300. It just felt like everything made sense. There weren't too many buttons on the body, but it wasn't like there weren't enough. Uh, my, one, my one gripe maybe with the C series in general is having the EVF on the back of the camera. It makes sense if you're gonna shoot like this, but you can't really shoot like this for long periods of time. If you're on a tripod, it makes sense too. I, it's, it's not a big deal, but um, it is kind of an odd placement. But other than that, like I personally think the C200 is the best, can, uh, the best camera in its kind of series. In the Canon series. In the Canon series. Yeah. I haven't used a C500 or C700, but yeah. besides those, this is the best one that they've ever made. Okay. Uh, the Panasonic, the Panasonic was funny. It was a little bit funny. Um, for one, I the first thing I noticed is you can almost not see out of this. And I thought, oh, it's cool. They have a built-in sun hood for this. Great. Yeah. It's completely useless. The thing's like a mirror. You can't see. So I ended up using our, uh, our behind-the-scenes guy, his jacket. Or his, uh, his, his shirt, shirt I yeah. threw over my oh, As threw over my four head. by five lens yeah, exactly <laughs> so I could see so I could see what was going on because I really couldn't see what's going on so that immediately that's one thing to note is if you're going to use if you're going to buy an EVA one you're either going to have to have one of those loop things which I also don't really recommend because the LCD is not very good and you're it's really low resolution yeah. the contrast is all off. It's just magnifying the problems are already there, yeah. basically. So you're going to have to buy an EVF, and it's yeah. going to cost you $1,500 to $2,000. Which means the price point on this one now is a little skewed, because it's not yeah. comparing apples to apples. This comes with an EVF exactly. and a great little monitor, which in the same situation, side by side, in the same sunlight, yeah. no problem. But also, 
Yeah, you. I, you, I, you I kept going on this. I'm going. Well, let me look, just look through. Oh, there isn't anything to look through. <laughs> So yeah. it was really nice to be able to look through and to, and to judge. And it was more, it was difficult to see on this, but you right. couldn't make it work, but it was right. easy to use. The EVF, obviously, is yeah. awesome. Um, other than that, I mean, it's, it felt a lot like an FS5. I don't yes. really like the FS5s. This is better. <laughs> this it is, felt like an FS5, but I hate that camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is better than the FS5, though. There are fewer buttons. The layout makes a little more sense. I really like this little toggle here where you can... You can set it to change your white balance or change your US ISO or change whatever you want. And then they have a little dial that you can use to set it. Um, cool little things like that. I like having the audio controls right here. I like Canon. I like that the audio dials are not flat. It makes them much easier to turn. <laughs> Trying to get a hold of them in there, not yeah. Not that we used them today, but I just noticed that. Yeah, that's um, a really good point. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's right. Here, it's like... I also like that you can unlock this and rotate it just with this that little button nice. on the back. Super Although nice. I've heard, had people say that you can hit that really easy and it, oh, it pops open or it releases itself. I've heard oh, that right. as a complaint about the camera. Um, I've also heard people get really tired of having these digging into their wrists. Oh, that's interesting because it hits you right on the side there, doesn't it? Um, I, Which they're in the same place on the Canon, but they're so much so further back. back. Yeah, and it's higher. But listen, feel the weight of this compared to this. This one's lighter to me. Much lighter. Yeah. Much lighter. And it's a much lighter camera. It's it's not as tall, which means you can probably mount it on a gimbal a lot easier. Yes, the, the gentleman that owns this camera says that he's had it on the Ronin M. I would believe him. It's pretty light. It's pretty compact. You put a lightweight lens on there, probably yeah. fine. The C200, I don't think you could fly on an M. Well, you you had said you thought it was just too high. I I've got to get my M out and I just try it. I think it's too it. tall. You yeah. should try it. Though. I will definitely try it because um, I want to see if we could. That should be great if you could because... If you can't, that means you got to step up to even a bigger, right, and that's right, just heavier right. to haul. And yeah. I think I think it's ergonomically, it's really great. The only thing that really, really, really bugged me was lacking an EVF yeah. and uh, a crappy LCD screen. Yeah, I just I felt like I don't know in using just a little bit that I used it, uh, changing your aperture here on the side. I, I will say also, yeah, the aperture wheel here is not super responsive, and you use these same dials to access the menus, the menu system on this. Honestly, like any menu system kind of stinks, but this one particularly <laughs> felt like a little weird. Um, there were just weird choices about it. It's, it's difficult, it's especially difficult to change to slow motion recording and stuff on this, I found. I'm sh you may be well, able to... Why was that? You, had, you have two steps on this. You have to go from normal record to... To uh, high to speed. To slow motion. To slow motion, sorry. Well, and that should and be it. That's actually it for this. It's like one oh, setting right. that you change. So you want to change one setting. Do you have um, to change more this, than one on this? You have to go in, change the frequency setting. Oh, no. You have to go in, change your resolution, and then go to your variable frame rate settings, turn it on, and then change the variable frame rate to 120. So it's like three steps. Wow. I wonder if you can pre record or preset those. You do it on a preset, it would be nice. If you're shooting very much slow motion, you'd probably want to do that. So. Well, let's get into the picture good. quality yeah, here. Cause, so, so we really sound like we're bagging on this little <laughs> camera here because I think it's a pretty amazing camera. I, I think it is a, well, it's just disappointing that it doesn't have an EVF. I think that is a price point issue and a, and a, and a functioning issue. Honestly, like all the other stuff, it's like, it, you got to pick your battles. Every camera is going to have something wrong Everything. with it that really bugs you. The C200 has stuff that really bugs me. Um, I, But... For me, the EVF is probably the biggest issue. Well, that would okay, be my so only real complaint. Let me tell you the biggest thing issue I have with the C200 net is it does not have a Kodak. It does not have a 422 10-bit Kodak. Oh, yeah. We should mention we shot today on Kodaks that are identical. Um, well, they're not identical, but they're both 150 megabit per second Kodaks because neither of these cameras have the, up, the update yet that will have a better Kodak. When it happens, this will have 400 megabits per second, which is really nice. This will have, what? 200 megabits per 200 second. 200 megabits per second. And it's still 420. This will be 422 10-bit. So that's a big deal. It's I mean, a big for deal broadcasts, in terms of yeah, in terms of image quality. All the all the broadcast guys are saying yeah. you got to have a 422 10-bit. This will not have that. It'll be 4208 bit. So yeah. that that's a big issue. And it might be worth kind of mucking through some of the smaller details in terms of handling just to get the image. Yeah, to get the image quality. If the image is there. So let's look at the image. Yeah. All right. So uh, the first thing we did is we just sat her down in like a nice um, shaded area with some nice even lighting, put the color checker next to her, and shot it. And this is a C200 first that we're looking at. The first thing I noticed about the C200 is it pushes magenta, 
Like if you look at the chip on the the chips on the color checker, the red one is kind of pink. It's very pink. And when we shift over to the Panasonic, you don't really have that problem, but it it's almost the yellow. opposite problem. It's kind of like yellow, and it pushes the the red because her her um, shirt was definitely maroon. It wasn't very red. Yeah. So side by side, you really see that stark difference between them. Boy, that's very different. Very the, interesting. The Canon feels a little more true to life, but I feel like there are more colors in the uh, EVA one. There's a little bit more color separation with the reds and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but maybe not as true to life. It's kind of funny. The picture, though, is very It's pretty. The roll-off on both of these cameras looks pretty nice. Yeah, so you look at the dynamic range here, and the obviously the, the contrast is applied to this because we shot log on both these. It's Canon log for the Canon, V log for the, or Canon log 3 for the Canon, V log for the Panasonic. So the contrast has been applied. You could have a little more, a little less, but just in terms of how they handle the highlights and the detail, it, it's really close. Even at Seeing, like plus two, plus two stops seems totally normal to me. I don't know why, but I yeah, yeah. I still feel like the color seems <coughs> seems more correct on the Canon to me. Yeah. Now, if we look here at uh, plus three stops, that's just barely when you start to clip on the side of her face, but it's like happening at the same time on both cameras. And even at plus four stops, they're both clipping very similarly. That's some incredible dynamic range there. It's really it's holding. That's plus four, plus stops. four stops. So there's the, that's back to normal. So we're back to normal. Um, now if we go down the scale, so we're going to go to minus one stop. The thing that I notice, and you almost notice immediately, is that the Panasonic actually gets a little more saturated it as does. you go down in exposure, which was really uh, funny to me because the Canon almost has the opposite problem where it starts to kind of become washed out as you go down in exposure. <laughs> At minus three stops, you really start to see noise with the Canon. It gets like really blocky and chunky. Cool. And then minus four minus stops. Minus four stops, the, the uh, Panasonic's kind of falling apart there. You get the noise and the, it's, well, it's, they're both really they're noisy, both, but yeah. this feels pasty to me. Yeah. At minus four, I mean, obviously this is to be expected, but at minus four stops, it gets really difficult to separate the shadows from the blacks. Mm -hmm. And the EVA one reacts by kind of getting this weird brownish, mm -hmm. mushy sort of look. The Canon keeps sort of tonal separation, but it gets really blocky in the shadows. Like the yeah. noise gets really blocky. Um, of course, like you're never going to push footage four stops. You shouldn't ever push no, four I mean stops. You just really miss the but, mark of your four stamps <laughs> off. <laughs> but it, what amazed me the most about this test is I could make them look um, almost identical mm -hmm. all the way up and down the range, which, which to me kind of says they both have almost the same dynamic range. It looks like it. it looks like they're very, very similar. Which I didn't expect because if you look at the, the V-Log and the Canon Log 3 straight side by side with no grading, the V-Log is much more flat. Yeah, the, the Canon log, you kept thinking, do we have the log on? Yeah, I kept getting worried. I was like, is this log? Is this really log, guys? But they both, but they graded, they about both the graded about the same. Um, I would say they both have roughly the same dynamic range. You can't go wrong with either one. Yeah, so let's look at the ISO. All right, the ISO test. Which is interesting because on the EVA-1, you have two native ISOs. You've got 800 and 2500, right? Yeah, so that's the cool thing about the EVA-1. It has two native ISOs, which means Theoretically, 800 and 500 ISO should have the same sort of noise pattern. 500? Sorry, 800 and 2500 should have the same sort of <laughs> noise pattern. So you set your native ISO and then you set your regular ISO um, on the Panasonic. So we set the native ISO for Panasonic at 800 for the first couple steps. So the first thing you see here is ISO 800 for both cameras, then ISO 1600, and these are both at native 800. And then we bumped up to 2500 ISO and we switched to the native 2500 on the Panasonic. And it does look really clean. Um, yeah, let's go, uh, hold it there though. Do you feel like that that looks, at 2500, do you feel like that looks cleaner on the Panasonic, which would be the only reason to have two yeah, natives. If, right, it's not cleaner, if it's not cleaner, then it then doesn't, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. No, that's a good question. Um, the I, to my eye, they both look kind of the same. They look very, very the, close. The EVA one might have a slight edge 
Um, but it's not really enough if I'm just watching it on a screen. Granted, this is a small laptop, but even when I was grading it on a larger screen, didn't look super different to my eye. Um, let's jump up to 6400 and see if that kind of makes a difference. At 6400 ISO, I actually almost feel like the Canon's cleaner. Um, That's really interesting. I'm kind if, of feeling that all the way along. We're just looking at... You look at like the darker chips yeah, on the checkerboard. This is starting to really dance in the darks yeah. here. How about in the black on the side? Yeah, you do see it more in the black yeah, too. Yeah, starting to see it. So that so having a second native ISO, I'm not sure I understand what the value of that is here. Even at like, look at this, 25,600 ISO, the, you, the noise is very, very visible on the EVA-1. Not really as visible over here. Boy, way more visible on the EVA-1. And the EVA-1 turns a little bit green too there at the end, which, yeah. I mean, you're not going to shoot that high, but... But look at that, the, the way it's falling apart and... <laughs> That's interesting. And it's becoming more contrasted. Look how deep the shadows are on the side of her face. Yeah. You know, you're not seeing anything back in there at all. You're seeing it's really dancing in the shadows. That's I really had, interesting. I had heard this. I had heard that the low light isn't that great on the EVA-1. I would say no, not compared to the C200 yeah. in this situation. But again, it's really fascinating. Not, not uh, as good in low light. Who shoots at 12,800? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, unless you're doing concerts or unless some you're doing concert, well, events and those kinds of things. Even concerts, though, if you're going to have spotlights and stuff, you can't shoot super high SOs because no. they're going to blow out. It really is for like events, events or news. You know, uh, like if you're going to go shoot chasing yeah. down police cars yeah. at night in LA so, yep. to shoot news stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the C200 kind of wins out on this one. Boy, that's interesting. Bit. So I the, didn't expect the that. negative or the I don't know. In my mind, it's physics, and I'm not so sure how a, a having two native ISOs. I, I you know I don't know. <laughs> it sounds a little bit. You tell him, JP. Give me. <laughs> <laughs> so for the rolling shutter test this time, we decided to be a little more scientific than just kind of like doing fast pans on the cameras. We wanted something that we could kind of measure as the same. So we were right next to a, a highway, and I thought, oh, let's just set the cameras up pointing at the cars, and we'll see big trucks going by because you see I even see that in feature films all the time now where it'll be a shot of a street and some big bus goes by and you can see the slant in the bus because they're using a camera with rolling shutter so um, we shot for a few minutes there and then this truck came by and it's kind of the perfect one so I'll just freeze frame where it comes by here and they the there's a little bit of a slant the truck wasn't going crazy fast there's a little bit of a slant but it looks pretty much the same on both on both cameras. Very similar. You're not you're not seeing. I, it would be negligible. I mean, maybe one or two yeah. milliseconds difference between these two. But they both seem they're both really good. Yeah, I would say the, the truck's not really bending, and it's mm -mm. really very solid. We were shooting on a 50 millimeter lens. The truck was probably about uh, 15, 20 feet away. So yeah, I mean, they both look good. They both have fast rolling shutters. Yeah, no, it's good. At least as fast as any other camera mm -hmm. in the same price range. Uh, okay, <laughs> slow motion. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at slow motion, which I think is always fabulous. The fact that these cameras do 1080p at uh, 120 frames a second. No is, crop. No crop is yeah. really nice. You and do lose a little bit of detail when you do this. It's not quite as sharp, especially if you're comparing it to like your 4K footage. Uh, but the motion is really nice. The motion is really nice. And I'm not seeing like a ton of artifacting or... No. A, a lot of the time with these cameras, you'll get kind of blockiness, especially in curves or in this ash that's being kicked up. It's um, really clean. It looks really pretty. Yeah, I mean, you see a lot of the detail. Sometimes you lose the detail in it, but you see a lot of that. This is such a critical item, I think, nowadays because everybody wants to shoot slow motion. Yeah, it seems like that's true. done so much. And, and having to crop in is a real pain. It is. I, had to, I shot on like a 14 millimeter lens once <laughs> with my C300 because we had to get like a wide... Right. <laughs> but it had to be in 120 frames. Yeah. Was, anyways. Uh, so, so but we did talk about the fact that it's a little more difficult to set up a, a shooting slow motion on the Panasonic versus the Canon. Yeah. But, bit. you know, once you figure it out, it's not going to be that big a deal. Yeah. So they look fabulous. Boy, picture-wise, these are looking really comparable. Really close. I mean, there's a very really different close. color look in both of them. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, but. I mean, I think that's kind of what it comes down to is what do you like to use and what color do you like? I like the Canon colors, uh, but I will say they're, in some ways they're very true to life, but in other ways they're not. They, I feel like they nail skin tone very well. 
but they have a hard time with reds. Um, on the other hand, Panasonic dealt with reds and blues really, really well, but the whole image really seemed a little bit yellow. Yeah. Uh, which you could possibly just cool off. It's hard to tell. Without yeah. sitting down and shooting a real project and grading it, uh, it's hard to tell. They both look really awesome. It, for me, it's almost more of a matter of taste than anything else. Well, I think it's a matter of taste, one, but two, I think the Kodak issue is a big deal. Yeah. I think the not yeah, yeah. having a good 422 10-bit Kodak is, it really puts the uh, C200 at a disadvantage. Behind, yeah. I think it's, C200 is, it's easier to use, it's mm -hmm. easier to see with the EVF, but I think you got a Kodak on that camera that's going to give you a broadcast quality that you're not going to get, and yeah. I think that's a pretty big issue. I did like the six... Uh, uh, on the top of this has almost a cheese plate. There's oh, six right. uh, spots, nice. you know, a quarter 20s on the top, so you've got a lot of places to attach things on the top, mm -hmm. and I thought that was really nice. But I, I do miss a little bit some of the focus features that you have on the Canon. I miss mm -hmm. the focus assist. The magnification doesn't magnify nearly as much. The Panasonic only punches in a tiny bit compared to the Canon. Um, I wasn't on it very much. Is there no focus assist? Is there no... There's no... Well, no, we there, you don't have the 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 thing that you have with the Canon where it like tells you if you're too far or too yeah. close. Which obviously. that is really That's nice. That's a proprietary thing. Yep. Um, but yeah, again, it's like trade-off. Do you want the f the focus features and the really, really great autofocus of Canon or do you want the 422 we 10 bit? We get into autofocus on Canon yeah. because when you start doing the touchscreen <laughs> autofocus, the C200 has some beautiful features yeah. there that pulls the focus and some things that are really nice. So, so it comes down to your needs more than anything. and. So this will have the 400 megabit per second 422 10-bit codec, but this also has raw light, which, which is which is pretty amazing. It looks really great. It's kind of a pain to implement, but um, yeah, and it's I've heard, <laughs> well, the, the complaint I've heard is it only has a single slot card, which yeah, is unfortunate because too. you can't do a very long interview. You got 15 minutes and you yeah, you ran out, out and you I've got done that cards. before on an Alexa trading out cards every 15 minutes. Really? Interviews. Yeah. Is that okay. just a pain? It's a pain. <laughs> I just, it would, you're like, you can't get any rhythm in Especially your Especially with the Alexa, because there's like not an easy audio, audio interface, so you're slating every... <laughs> oh my, that'd be terrible. Anyway, So, I don't think... I don't there's think, no winner here. No. It's, they're, well, they're both winners. They're both they really, really nice Very good cameras. Very good cameras. Excellent cameras. I think, though, the Canon's a little cheaper just because of the uh, It is. That's, the that's a big consideration, but... <sighs> Canon is also just kind of annoying <laughs> that they don't that they don't include all the features you really want. I do have to really give props to the guys at Panasonic for packing this camera as full as they possibly could. And I the mean, way they should have. They yes. don't have an EVF. That's a pain too, but it, feature wise they really kind of knocked it out of the park. Yep, they really did. So there you have it, the Canon C200 versus the Panasonic EVA1. Keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. Subscribe to The Slanted Lens, like all my buddies here did. You can come and hang out with us. We have a wild time together, me and my buddies here, my mannequin buddies. We have a great time together, so come and join The Slanted Lens. Subscribe, you can be friends with us too.